Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to Double Play Baseball. My name is Jack, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Ryan Donahue. In today's video, we are going to break down the Nationals offseason from 2022 and then also preview their 2023 season. We're sorry this one's coming a day late over the weekend, but this whole week has been National League East, and Ryan, this is the 15th team we've done, so officially halfway done with this series. So make sure you guys go check out the rest of the videos. You can find them down in the description. But Ryan, why don't you start us off by bringing us through the Nationals offseason moves? Yeah, so they had a, a few kind of departures and then additions as well. The kind of the big ones on the on the addition side: Dom Smith, Jammer Candelario. I think I butchered that name, but Corey Dickerson, Stone Garrett as well, Trevor Williams, Alex Colome, and Erasmo Ramirez for the addition side. And then they lost Nelson Cruz, Luke Voigt, who were both half year, one year deals. Uh, Joe Ross, D, D Strange, Gordon, Anibal Sanchez, and then Alcides Escobar, who is still in the league despite what I thought. So kind of some names there. I mean. Nothing too big or too uh, too crazy, but which one do you think of these were the biggest addition or subtraction? It, it's weird because, you know, bullpen is, like, bringing in one bullpen move might not change much for the Nationals, but I think the addition of Trevor Williams is probably the biggest of them because he's been, he's actually been a really good pitcher the last two seasons with the Pirates and the Mets. He's been a starter at times, he's been a reliever, um, and overall he's had two solid years in a row. So for the Nationals, you're trying to find stability in a uh, pitching staff that has been far below average in recent years. I think Trevor Williams was a good addition. Yeah, for me, I went, uh, I ended up going Dom Smith slash Candelario. Uh, you know, they're guys who have played well in the past and they, they've shown promise on other teams. So maybe they're a little bit of, pro- of a project for a team that's not really going to be too crazy in 2023. We both agree too, too crazy might even be overstating of what they're what they're going to be in 2023 we'll get to that later but they're all they're also trade candidates if you figure that out and maybe there's some hope there you you, you get a prospect for them back so kind of talked about that a little bit with the a's but uh it, it, it's something that you know there's upside of bringing potential bringing some uh bringing some offense to, to a team that maybe lacks a little bit if you look at their projected lineup yeah it's just i mean this team a couple of years ago wins a world series you've got players like max scherzer and Trey Turner and Juan Soto and and now you're looking and the the crown jewel of the offseason is maybe Dom Smith who was a far below average hitter last year with the Mets and couldn't see time uh, there and really his last good season came in 2020 it's just hard for the Nationals they had the worst record in baseball last year I believe I was looking through it today lost 107 games no, no, and I'm getting you know we're going to make our own predictions about how many games they're going to win this year but not going to be very many. And to get into my grade for their offseason, I went with a D plus. I mean, I've given out a couple apps. I've given out some lower Ds. They, they didn't well, lose a whole lot, which shot. is good, but they have traded a lot in recent memory. Um, they just didn't add much either. And so for a team with a roster that was already was- as poor as the Nationals, I had to go D plus. Yeah, I, I mean, I did a D. We've seen bad teams have okay off seasons from what they added you see Chris Bryan going to the Rockies last year even though we both agree that was kind of a head scratching move just in general but uh, you know teams have attempted to add and attempted to believe in their pieces that they have and to add it and they're going to trust in their uh, their prospects this year but I ended up going with a D it's just like you said and Dom Smith isn't anything special adding he's no Chris Bryan adding and he's not going to move the needle and you, uh, you lose a couple guys who uh you weren't expecting to keep and kind of would have been a head scratcher if you did keep some of these guys like a Nelson Cruz who's pretty much at the end of his career you you wouldn't really expect him to re-sign to a team that's all the way in the dumps now they had a little bit of hope last year with Juan Soto but so Dom Smith is the main guy and they're going to trust in the prospects which I like go for that development but we've talked about in the past like sometimes it can be bad for prospects to be those main guys on a team when they're not they might not be ready yet so you know I would have gone with a D and I think there could have been a little bit more but it's just kind of where the Nationals are at their franchise yeah to kind of move into what to expect for me I know they had the worst record in Major League Baseball last year there's some teams that are going to compete I, I didn't want to go as far as to say I think they're gonna have the worst record in the league again um, or in MLB but I'm gonna say they have the worst record in the National League um, you know maybe the A's come for the overall crown of being the worst team in baseball who knows maybe it's the Tigers but I just think in general in the National League 
the, the Nationals are the worst team. They've got the worst roster. There aren't too many pieces that I'm super hopeful for, and I'll get to that in my prediction. Um, but I think worst record in the NL is where I'm trending to what I'm expecting, at least, from the Nationals. Yeah, I guess if you go from a record and team perspective, uh, how they're going to perform, I, 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 I'd probably be in agreement with you. We're kind of drafting our total recognitions, so we'll see what they end up with if you want to st- stick around for that see how bad we have the nationals nationals fans come come that uh prediction episode but end up going with some solid production from their prospects and they they've got a few key guys kind of that you have from the max Scherzer or trade turner trade and now juan soto trade uh cj abros Kenzie gore uh kiva ruiz and josiah gray so i don't i don't know if they're you can consider them prospects anymore but uh kind of going solid production from those prospects once were when you got them maybe they're now MLB pieces, or at least they're going to have to be for the Nationals. So I think you can see some solid production, and don't take that out of context. I'm not saying uh, they're going to go win some awards or anything, but you know, you maybe see guys that can impact your team in the future and kind of see some promise out of those guys that you traded your big stars for. Yeah, my my bold prediction for the team is pretty much the exact opposite of your what to expect, because as much as I want to be hopeful about these prospects, I'm kind of thinking that we're going to see disappointing years again. Um, last year, Kybert Ruiz, who they got a couple years ago in the Max Scherzer Trey Turner trade, he was slightly above average. Like he, he was good for being a, a young catcher, but all the rest of the pieces they've got in recent trades haven't looked very good. C.J. Abrams was not a good shortstop for them last year. Josiah Gray's had some of the worst pitches in baseball um, the last couple seasons and doesn't really fit into a top of the rotation quite yet. Mackenzie Gore has shown, shown some promise, but not really sure how I feel about it because these were players that we believed in when they were prospects for the Padres and the Dodgers, two teams who are competing for, you know, league championships. But now you're on the Nationals and these players are expected to be, as you were mentioning earlier, the faces of the franchise. So for a guy like Josiah Gray, who was supposed to be maybe the Dodgers five starter if he made the major leagues, now gets thrust in and with Patrick Corbin being as bad as he is and Steven Strasburg being injured, like some people expect Josiah Gray to be an ace and it's just too early in his career to be to have that much expectations and have you know everyone coming to the ballpark to watch you because you're the only good players on the team or at least the only players with very much potential. Um, so I think it's a case of they're not up in the majors too early, but there's be, there's a lot being asked of them early in their careers, and you know maybe one or two of them pan out, but overall I think you're going to see some more disappointing years from these prospects that we once believed in when they were going to be you know nine hole hitters or five starters on the Padres or Dodgers oh yeah what made me chuckle as you say and everyone's coming to the ballpark to see him and but the reality is when you're a team like the Nationals to be a couple thousand fans every every night yeah so I mean there's not pressure in that sense but there is pressure to be the guy and I think it depends on how the front office treats them uh if he if you kind of take it a Rockies approach where, uh, you know, we know they're going to be bad, but their, their owner or GM came out. We talked about this in the Rockies episode. They came out and said, like, we think we can be a 500 team. So if the expectation within the Nationals clubhouse, within that front office is saying, you know, we believe in you guys, like we could be good this year. Maybe that means the pressure is too much. And some, some guys respond to that in different ways. Some guys respond to the pressure is like, yeah, yeah, I'm the guy. I'm going to go show you that I'm the guy. And some guys aren't ready like you said so it depends on if they're forcing them to be the guy but if they come come up with their approach and say kind of uh you know we know we're in, we don't have a great roster here but we believe in you guys the f- your, the future for your careers and if let's just go out have some fun play some baseball maybe, maybe those guys will respond better that way so i think it's it's kind of tbd how these guys are going to respond to that but kind of I, I digress and going into my bold prediction i guess uh it, it, it's weird to say that it's bold but I went with that they don't lose 100 games this year. And I'm not saying they're going to be a winning team. That's the nowhere near the playoffs and still at the last of that, the end of that division. But 95 to 99 wins, I think, is probably their sweet sweet spot where I think they could, they could they have a chance to end up if you get health, help from Strasburg. I mean, I mean there's got, there's got to be something there still. It's, it's not like he fell off the face of the earth. He's just been hurt and... Uh, I'm not going to say anything about Patrick Corbin, but the, P- Patrick Corbin, Josiah Gray, Strasburg, when healthy, that's an okay uh, a top three and maybe a team uh, okay in sense that they might not lose 100 games. 
with some solid production from the prospects. Maybe. I mean, they lost 107 last year, and they played with Juan Soto for the first half of the season, and they had a Luke Voigt on the roster and a Nelson Cruz on the roster. We This is our second time recording this because the first time uh, didn't work out. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you in the first one. How many people from their road or from their lineup can you name? All right, let's go position. <laughs> Kira Ruiz, catcher. Yep. Uh, I think we we said Joey Manessis is going to play first. Yep. I couldn't tell you their second baseman. I know who it was. It was Cesar Hernandez at yep. one point last year. Because they've he, lost. I don't a, know if he's, they've lost a, a a good amount of talent. I, I I'm not sure either. But I'm saying they're going to lose on our it, game. So. CJ Abrams, I couldn't tell you third base. Uh, I, I bet Candelario plays third base. Victor Robles. Oh, yeah, Candelario, uh, who we just talked about. Uh, Dom Smith, somewhere in there. It's like six. Yeah. Second time around, that's solid. I bet, I bet Corey Dickerson <laughs> finds a spot in the outfield. When I had my no, rankings yeah. for, I go. think it was right field. I think I ranked him for right. I ranked him for one of the corner spots at least because that's Fangraphs projecting him to be the starter. But I'm, it, with how bad the bullpen is and how bad we've mentioned that the rotation is, that lineup's not good enough to salvage, um, I don't think, somewhere in the 90s for wins I, or for losses. I think I think it's going to be another 100 loss season. Maybe they can improve from 107. I'm not promising that I'm going to predict it, though. Um, do you have any more thoughts on the Nationals? I mean, I, these videos are always the, the worst to make because we don't like being negative about teams. Um, but hard to find too much to say positive about this Nationals team. Just be happy that you guys, if you're a Nationals fan, got that World Series win a couple years ago. Yeah, I think that's where the Nationals kind of separate themselves from some other franchises. Uh, you look at a team like the A's, they're kind of just the A's Rockies. They're just kind of down in the dumps. They're just not great franchises. And when you look at the Nationals, there's some hope in the franchise in the front office. It's just more of a, kind of just a natural rebuild for a team that isn't like the Dodgers or Mets that spends a bunch every year and doesn't really go through rebuilds. So the Nationals, they're not like a, a poverty franchise or anything. They're just going through their rebuild. And I have I've confidence that as they go through it, they, they will be back uh, in a few years time but it just sucks right now they're kind of just entering it with Juan Soto leaving and Max Scherzer trade turn with the year before so that's where they're at they're going to be bad for a couple years but there, there is some light at the end of the tunnel for national fans absolutely well thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video as I mentioned at the start of it you can go and find the rest of the team previews down in the description below I'll also link the playlist at some point here at the end of the video uh, up top there have been 15 I believe when this has come out so halfway through and we're going to do the other half all the way up until opening day before we give our final record predictions award predictions world series picks everything like that so make sure you guys are subscribing hitting the notification bell to stay tuned leave a comment down below if you're a Nationals fan and you know we can give you some therapy but Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've been Double Play, and we'll see you next time.